So has this ever happened to you where you film something and then you bring it back into your editor and you notice that there was a car that was passing by or somebody walking by that ruined your shot? And now you're asking yourself, what am I gonna do? How do I get rid of them? Your client is breathing down your neck asking you, when is this going to be live? Because you need to get this done. You don't have the time, the resources, nor the money to get this shot fixed. What are you gonna do? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to easily remove any object, person, place, or thing from your footage using machine learning, artificial intelligence. And I'm gonna do this on this brand new Dell XPS 13 inch laptop, which is part of Intel's Evo platform that utilizes Intel's 11th gen processors known as Tiger Lake. If you guys wanna learn more about this laptop, I'm gonna leave links down below in the description. So I've partnered with Intel who are sponsoring this video to demonstrate how to do this in After Effects using Adobe Sensei technology driven by Intel's 11th generation Core i7 processors with XC graphics, which is going to give you up to 2.7 times faster performance for content creation. What I'm about to show you is pretty mind blowing. Like these are type of effects that you would expect from Hollywood movies and now you can do them yourself. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into After Effects and be ready to be mind blown. So I went ahead and imported this 4K video into my project and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play so that you can see the sequence here. So it's a cool shot that says, welcome to Utah on the side, there's a sign here. But the problem that I see is this truck passes by. Personally, I think it's ruining the shot. So what I'm gonna do is go to my very first frame and I'm gonna mask out this truck. I wanna get rid of it. So the very first thing that I need to do is, it's a very small truck, so I need to zoom in. So control plus, and what I need to do now is mask this truck out. So I've zoomed in pretty heavily because it's a very small little tiny truck here. So once I've selected my footage, there's a little pen tool up here. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. And then what we need to do is just create a small mask around this truck, as best as we can here. And then once we do that, everything's gonna turn black. Now don't freak out, this is normal. What we need to do now is reveal the options here underneath our mask. And instead of add, we need to change this to none. The reason we need to do this is so that way we can see our mask and the background layer also. So you can see here, I've missed the mirror a bit and I need to make some adjustments. So no problem, I can just stretch this out and then move this a couple frames forward. But before I do that, it's very important that I go ahead and click on mask path because what mask path is going to do is when I click on it, it's going to motion track my movement. So let's go ahead and move a couple frames forward and then move our mask with it. There it goes. Now, if we need to make some adjustments, you can go ahead and do that by just moving the mask a little bit and readjusting it because as a truck moves forward, it's going to get bigger. So I need to make my mask bigger accordingly. So let's go ahead and just move a couple more frames, move our mask down, and then make our mask a little bit bigger. And we're gonna go ahead and do that until the truck gets closer to the end of the frame. One thing that you gotta be careful is in this situation here, there are lines on the road. We wanna try to avoid those as much as possible. We wanna really focus on the truck rather than the lines because then you're telling uh, After Effects that we wanna get rid of those lines, which we don't. So just be very careful with that. And I have a pretty decent mask. I'm gonna continue to track forward here, zoom out as needed, and then move my mask down more. Something else that you wanna be mindful is, for example, the truck has a shadow underneath here. And a lot of times if you're tracking people, they also have a shadow. So you wanna make sure that you also have the shadow inside of your area that you're masking. And this is looking pretty good here. Actually, that's the end of the frame, so I'm just gonna move this. And you'll notice, I'm only doing it a couple frames ahead because it tracks really well. If I go back, it's doing a pretty good job. Now I noticed like right here, I kind of messed up a little bit, or it's not that I messed up, I just didn't track enough. So what I can do here is I can just select my mask and then just reposition this up a little bit more. Again, I'm clipping the line here, so be mindful of that and just kind of move that out of the way. And if you need to look a little closer, just hit Control plus to really refine your mask. So now that I go back, that's looking pretty good. Again, I think I'm clipping the roof or I'm right at the roof line. So if I wanna make sure that doesn't clip, just move that up a little bit. So I think I did a pretty good job at tracking the truck. The truck is inside my mask the whole entire time, even when it goes out of frame, so that's good. 
So now let's get rid of the truck. So there's this thing called content aware fill. Now, if you can't see this in the right side menu, what you need to do is go to window and then in the workspace area here, you need to make sure that content aware fill is checked. So we have it checked on ours, so that's good. Now we wanna change some parameters here. So alpha expansion, I normally leave it to zero or four. And then the fill method. So this is going to depend on what you're trying to remove. So for example, object, we're trying to get rid of an object here. This would be the one that I would select. Surface would be something like, for example, there's like graffiti on the wall or maybe like a shirt design that you wanna get rid of. That would be the one that I would select. And then edge blend is, for example, let's say if you have like a piece of paper where the texture is different. So for example, you have a piece of paper, but there's handwriting on it. That would be one where I would use edge blend. But in this case, we're going to select object. Now, before I select generate fill layer, remember at the very beginning when I told you to select none, we wanna change this back and we wanna change it to subtract. Okay, so now you should notice that when you change it to subtra subtract, it should turn black and that's perfectly fine. So now this is the next step where you click on generate fill layer and this is where the magic happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now this is a very intensive task because what's happening is that After Effects is analyzing several frames ahead and several frames behind to see what is changing in that footage. So since we selected the truck, what we're telling After Effects or what After Effects is doing is it's analyzing the road, it's analyzing everything in the frame to see, okay, the truck was here and then five frames ahead, the truck is going to be here, but what was here in that frame? So in this case, there's pavement, there's lines, and what it's going to do is remove the truck and replace it with the pavement and those lines that were there before, which is really cool. And because a lot of people don't know this, a lot of people think that Intel is a hardware company only, but they're actually a software company and their software team works with the people over at Adobe to optimize their software to work really well with this hardware. And that's why you'll see a lot of performance improvement on a mobile computer like this, which is actually pretty incredible. In fact, it's done right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at this clip. So this is what it looked like before, and then this is after. And I think it did an incredible job. Like we had a truck here before and it ruined the shot. Now we have a perfect shot without the truck, which is amazing. Now, you're probably telling yourself, okay, that's cool. Like I could see it doing that because it was pretty simple. The road is pretty flat. There wasn't really any other objects. So it shouldn't have a problem, right? Well, demo number two is going to really blow your mind. So let's go ahead and jump into this one. So for this next scene, we wanna remove this airplane that is flying over an island. It's going through water. It's growing through rocks. There's a lot going on. I mean, this is one where I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way that it's going to remove this. So let's go ahead and do the same process. So let's start with frame number one. Go ahead and get your selection tool and just draw a quick mask around this plane as best as I can. Here we go. Nice and tight right there. Now, same thing, what we wanna do is go into our mask and then what we wanna do is change this to none. Now, one thing I didn't tell you guys on the very first one is you, there's something else that you can do is if you right click on mask, you can track this mask. So in other words, you can tell After Effects, just do the motion tracking yourself, I trust you. And normally it does a pretty good job with it. However, there are times where you need to kind of take over. So you can do this one frame at a time. So if I go frame one, next frame, okay, it's doing a pretty good job. I'm just clicking here and that's doing a good job. Or I can just basically tell it, do the whole entire sequence. Now I'm gonna tell it to do the whole entire sequence and it's doing a pretty good job, okay. But then if it screws up, that's when you have to take over. So, so far so good. Oh, oh, stop. So you see right here, the mask is not covering the whole entire plane. This is what I was talking about. So basically this is my fault because I didn't make the mask big enough. So then I, what I have to do is just go back a couple frames where this started to happen, which is basically like right here. And then what I'm gonna do now is just delete all the frames after that, delete, and then readjust my mask. So then do that, that looks pretty good. And then go ahead and track that forward again. Very nice. So once we've motion tracked the object that we wanna remove, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the truck. So the very first thing is select our mask. And then what we wanna do is change this to subtract which is going to give this this black fill and it's perfectly normal. So don't worry about that. 
And then from here, we're gonna go back to our content aware fill screen. And then I'm gonna leave the alpha expansion. I'm actually gonna change this to zero. And then again, this is an object that we're trying to remove. We're gonna do this for the whole entire work area. And then finally, just generate fill layer. And then it's going to start analyzing these frames. And you can see this, it's doing a really good job I'm doing this very quickly, in fact. We're now at 13, 14, 15, 16. I mean, it's doing it pretty quick here. And then we, once this is done, we get to experience the magic. I know, I didn't believe this either. I'm like, there's no way that After Effects is going to remove this plane going over so many freaking objects. And it did it. Okay, so this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like after. <laughs> no way, no freaking way. Like if you would have told me, Armando, I can remove a plane in a couple of minutes, I, I would have not believed you that this was even possible. This is insane. This is the power of machine learning and artificial intelligence. This is incredible. What an amazing time to be alive. So we're leveraging all of this power using Adobe Sensei powered by this Intel 11th generation Core i7 processor that is going to give us this type of performance in such a small form factor. If you guys wanna learn more about this laptop, I'm gonna leave links down below in the description. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.